Theory in a nutshell, identifying cadences. Although I am gearing this towards the RSTM level six uh, cadence identification part of the exam, it's for, of course, any kind of um, learning of the cadence identification. For our purposes in this video, we're gonna be talking about three different cadences. Um, specifically, one, the authentic cadence, there's only one authentic cadence, also known as the perfect cadence. It's five to one, a dominant triad going to a tonic triad, five one. And then there's the half or imperfect cadence, of which we're looking at two of them, a one to five or a four to five. So tonic going to dominant or subdominant going to dominant. So these are chords side by side that finish off a phrase, okay? So if you notice, each of these cadences involve a dominant chord. So the authentic or perfect is five one and the half both go to five. So um, sometimes I'll talk about a neon sign in your head. If, if, if there is an accidental, because this is identification, you're going to be given um, a cadence, you've got to decide what kind of cadence it is and what key it's in. If there is an accidental, because there is always a dominant triad in here, you will know it's a minor key because we're using harmonic minor and because the dominant triad in a minor key always has the raised leading note. Okay, so this is very helpful in identification of these um, cadences. Neon sign your head, remember, if there's an accidental, it's gonna be a minor key. It makes it easier. Okay, so hopefully in your mind, you're going, well, two flats, that's G minor. <laughs> now, let's take a look at from, from the very beginning. First, you look at it and you say, okay, what key is this? Well, first of all, I know that there's no sharp, uh, accidental here. There's nothing raised, so I know it's gonna be the major, it's C major. Okay, so C major. But if I wasn't sure about that, and I don't know, I could think, well, it could be C major or A minor, that would be the relative minor, but it is indeed C major, because it cannot be in a minor. There's nothing raised. Then we have to add the functional chord symbols. Okay, in a major key, remember, we're only using tonic, subdominant, and dominant chords. That's it. There's no other triads here, chords here at all. So in a major key, they are all major triads. So you would use all uppercase Roman numerals for the functional chord symbol, functioning back to the key. That's underneath. Okay, in minors, the tonic and subdominant are minor triads, and the dominant is still um, a major. So you would use lowercase for one and four in a minor key. We know this is C major. We look here and we go, okay, well, that's a G, and that's a C. Now, why am I looking at these notes only? These are important, of course, but this is a full chord, a full triad, where they have doubled the root, and the root will always be in the bottom. Okay, that's really important to remember. The root is in the bottom. Sometimes I have students looking up here, well, there's a G here and a G here. They get all, you know, confused about what they're seeing up here. And, like, I understand why they do, but really all you need to do is look in the bottom because your root will be down here. Okay, so that's a G. And that's a C. Read oh, that's a G. So I say to myself, well, what is G in C major? You can use your fingers. C, D, E, F, G, it's five, right? Five, and C, of course, is one. That's your, well, that's your, that's your uh, sorry, your authentic cadence. So then um, we're gonna do the root quality chord symbols because in the RCM level six exam, you need to do that. So we know that C major, that's five to one, okay? So the root, quality chord root, we take the root. These are the roots again. So that's a capital G, there's your root. Quality is major, so I don't have to add anything. If it were minor, I'd put a little M there, but it's not, it's a major triad, because dominant is always major in a major key. This is also a major triad. C is the root, C, there you go, okay? So it will look like this. Okay, now we have to name the triad. And this triad is, five to one, is authentic. Okay, remember anything to five is a, called a half cadence, but five to one is authentic cadence. Now let's do a couple of these together. Now, I see um, two sharps here, so I could 
go to that first, go well, D major or B minor, but I'm gonna look here and see if there's any accidentals. I don't see any accidentals, so I know it's a major key because one of these chords is a dominant chord, and if it's in the minor, it's gonna have a raised leading tone. So I'm going with the D major, D major. All right, this is a D and that's an A. In D major, D is one. In D major, A is five. One to five. Okay, that's a half cadence. And we're gonna do the root quality chords. Capital D, I know it's a major triad. Capital A, I know it's a major triad. Done. Let's take a look at another one. Here we go. That's a little bit lower there. Okay, now I see this neon sign. It's going, whoa, there's an accidental there. This must be a minor key. This, this cadence is in a minor key. Two flats. Hopefully you're saying, yep, that's G minor. You might notice this is the same one I used earlier to talk about that neon sign, the same cadence. This is a D and that's a G. Okay. Now, another problem I, I, I find that students have once in a while, if they're, if they're, um, um, a melody instrument like flute or violin, um, they'll, they'll sometimes make, make the mistake of thinking that as a B, like forget that you're in bass clef. Remember these are in bass clef, right? If you're a melody instrument, remember these guys are in bass clef. So D and a G. Okay, D, G, A, B, C, D, is the dominant. We know it's still a major triad. That tells us. G though, G, B flat, D, this is one, and we know in a minor key, that is a minor triad. When we go to do the root quality chords, we have D, it's D major, but this one, capital G, we have to put an M there because it's a minor triad. Okay, now this is called authentic. Okay, now our last one, there's a little bit of a neon sign here too. Look how they're only one note apart. Keep that in your mind for a sec. Any accidentals? Nope. So this is an E major, four sharps E major. This is an A and that's a B, one note apart. There was a second apart here. That tells us actually that it's gonna be four to five because there's no skipping here, it's next note. Let's check that out. E, F, G, A, yep, there we go, four. E, F, G, A, B, yep, there are five. Okay, that's another type of half cadence. It could be one to five or four to five. But you see how they're just one note apart. That can tell you, that does tell you that it's a four to five half cadence, not a one to five half cadence. All right, I hope this helped.